everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Board Game Breakfast. When it's been a week, we were at the UK Games Expo. We were at Come On Expo, and you're gonna see videos for those this week, but we're back to normal. Q&A today, um, we got um, lots of videos, reviews going up this week. It's gonna be a great week of stuff. Dice Tower Con is on the way. Sign up for Dice Tower Con and Dice Tower Retreat. But meanwhile, let's get the show started. Hey everybody, so I'm recording this episode all over the place, but I wanted to talk to you for a moment about a couple of exciting things. First of all, there's the contest. We ran a contest last week for Bulk. We're the uh, winner of that contest. You will be notified by email if you want it. So if you don't get an email, I apologize, then you haven't won. But you can enter one last time. We're having one more contest for Bulk. Uh, to enter this contest, you just need to email us at contest at dicetower.com. And in the subject heading, put Balk5, B-A-L-K-5. To enter the contest, you just need to go to Balk.co, B-A-L-K.co, and tell us what if two players bid the same highest card in the new game Balk. All right, so that's all you got to do. Go there, find the answer to that question, email it to us, um, and the winner of this will get a $50 gift certificate to Amazon and a copy of Balk. All right, let's now talk real quickly about a cool announcement I like to make, is that uh, you guys know that I work with Arcane Wonders on the Dice Tower Essentials line for great games. Well, we like to announce that a new game has been added to the line. I don't know exactly when it's coming to America, but it's one that I'm a big fan of, and that is Smartphone Inc. So Smartphone Inc., a fantastic game, will be distributed in America uh, under the Dice Tower Essentials line, and we'll be announcing soon uh, how the timeline for that works, but we're hoping to have it out this year. Other things that I found on the internet, I found a thread on Reddit about unwritten rules in games. So what are these unwritten rules? Of course, a lot of the things that people wrote are not my unwritten rules, of course, but I found that to be an interesting thing. Maybe I'll do a video on it at some point. Uh, I also found a thread about in-game honesty. And there was a discussion on that, right? Like how much can you basically just lie right to someone's face in a game? Obviously in Werewolf, it's okay to lie right to other people or social deduction games. But what about beyond that? Can you lie to people in a game? Obviously different opinions on that. There's a new Dungeons and Dragons commercial. If you haven't seen this one, if you're a fan of the old D&D cartoon, they found actors that looked a lot like them. Of course, this is a commercial from Europe. Uh, so I don't think I found an English version of this commercial, but it's selling a car. But, it, you know, it's nostalgic. Uh, board Game Geek. I found a geek list called uh, Regrettable Puns I Used When Playing Board Games. So that was pretty funny. Uh, you can check out that list. Uh, Isaac Childress, who designed Gloomhaven, wrote a long post about 18xx games where he talks about the good in them and the bad and him playing them, the positive things about 18xx and maybe the negative things. I thought it was a very interesting article to read. And Restoration has put up a Twitter about the uh, timeline of all their different games that's coming out and there's some new stuff on there so you can check that out. That's what I found on the internet this week. Let's keep going. This is Roy Candy, and this is Printed Pieces, where I talk about 3D printing and what it can bring to the tabletop hobby. So I know in previous episodes, I've talked about terrain that you can build with your 3D printer for different board games and stuff, but I've been messing around a lot with the Middle Earth Miniatures game from Games Workshop for the Lord of the Rings characters, and I thought it'd be really cool to have some fantasy terrain to put around the board to have with these Lord of the Rings characters as you play the game. So I looked on Thingiverse for fantasy terrain, and I found these really cool towers that I was able to 
put together, print out. I print out, there's all sorts of different ruin like patterns um, that you can print out. And I printed out like a base and then like, I was like, man, that looks really good. So I print out like a top to that. And then I print out another base with a different like ruin pattern on it. And then print out another top to that. And I think when you put these sort of things on the board as you're playing the game, it definitely makes it feel a lot more thematic. And of course, miniatures games have the rules for all the terrain and stuff like that. Um, I also found this cool like, looking pool or whatever or like well sort of thing it's i guess supposed to be like a scrying pool sort of thing but i thought that'd be good as like a centerpiece to a town for like these miniatures games and stuff like that so i print out one of those as well and put some resin in there to uh, make it look like it was real water in it and stuff like that um but there's all sorts of amazing things you can print out for like 3d terrain if you're into miniatures games or into games like that and things that can just make your board games and miniatures games come to life as 3d printing you can just print out all sorts of stuff and a lot of these pieces would cost you tons of money like um just one of these 3d like wall things cost me like a dollar fifty to print out in in filament so it takes a while to print like it would take up to 12 hours but it was definitely worth the time for the uh the way that they look when they're done well thanks so much for joining me on printed pieces and i'll see you on the next one Hi, Mike Felicio from Solo Mode Games. I'm here to talk to you today about a new game called Alter Quest. It's on Kickstarter now with Brady Sadler and Adam Sadler, and I'm going to give them the floor. Have at it, gentlemen. Go for it, Adam. All right, Alter Quest is a cooperative fantasy adventure board game for one to four players. Um, it utilizes the next evolution of our modular deck system, which uh, we introduced in Street Masters and Brook City. Which what means, that means you'll be combining decks. <laughs> I talk over him usually. You combine decks, you have hero decks to play as, you're going to fight against threat decks that control all the monsters and traps in the game, and you'll be t going on quests that are by quest decks, and those will tell you what your objectives are and what kind of things lie in the dungeon as you try to explore it. And also there are villain decks, which uh, determine the big bad guy that's leading the army you're going up against. There's also altar, altar cards, lurker cards, search cards, and future cards that also add to the modularity of the game. Um, the features are actually miniatures of 3D elements, uh, you know, like alchemy desks or fungal patches or lock chests, things you would find in a dungeon. And they are things you can actually interact with on the board. Um, so you can go up to the Alchemy Desk and search and see what's in there. So every game you play, you can customize by swapping these decks in and out. You can co combine them any way you want to create whatever scenarios you want. And all this content is designed to be experienced as a standalone game, like a one-off adventure. But you can also play narrative uh, stories to uh, level your characters up and tie games together to create a big, longer story. Um, and uh, if you've played Hero Quest as a kid, like we did, you'd really appreciate mm -hmm. this whole product model. <laughs> and uh, the, the name Alter Quest comes from the altars in the world, uh, the world of Eridica. These are magical conduits, I would say. They have magical energy pouring out of them, and that is represented with the altar dice in this game. And altar dice are a pool of dice that heroes can use to trigger special abilities, but threats and villains and quest cards and feature cards will also use those alter dice, so you have to be careful not to trigger too many special abilities because you might be giving the enemy uh, power against you. So. And the hero dice you roll to resolve things have no failures. No you're blanks. Like, you're either hitting or you're gaining focus to hit later, and there's a lot of resource management with those, so, um, and exploding dice also. Yes, exploding dice. Yeah. All right. <laughs> also, giant frogs. That's giant my frogs. contribution to this video. <laughs> giant frogs. Thanks so much, guys. This is another exciting game in your modular deck system. And if you're interested, take a look on Kickstarter. Thank you so much for your time, and have a great day. Two brothers set loose in a thrift store. This is Thrift Store Throwbacks. What's up, Dice Tower? We're the Brothers Murph, and this week we have what, Nick? Totally tut. Totally tut, man. About King Tutankhamun. Yep. You know what? Not taking anything away from the actual king. You know what my personal favorite King Tut is? Little Steve. Little Steve Martin. Steve Martin. From SNL, like right over here. What? We can't. We can't do that. Oh right. Sorry. SNL is very serious about copyright and stuff, and we don't want to get Tom in trouble. But like, I feel like we can show up for like one more second. Check it out. Now when it was a young man, he never. It's because. Well, here's the thing, though. If we if we get Tom so many copyright strikes that he gets kicked off of YouTube. Then we could be the Dice Tower. No more Tom. Competition eliminated. What about Sam and Z, though? We'll just hire them as our employees. That's just what the Dice Tower does. Nick. Bring the tut. <laughs> Alright fam, this is what I think 
King Tut is because there's no rules in this here box. Uh, but this is a math game, so you're going to be trying to make maths happen, I think, to build this pyramid. So what I imagine is you get an ending figure, an integer, as they call it. And i got to build this thing up with uh, commands or whatever those things are called, uh, exponents and stuff, PEMDAS, math, right? But you have to get your tiles kind of on a Scrabble and stuff, and you go... With a with a like a spinny majig, and I can build up my pyramid, my pyramid, excuse me, as much as I can. So I'm like, I got three plus five equals eight. That's true. Five, and I must subtract four because I got a one here, and I can put one. That's also true. Then King Tut will be happy. He's still gonna die younger than he meant to, but it's gonna be, you know, he's gonna be okay. That's how you build a foundation of knowledge. Get it? It's a metaphor. Uh, so that was totally King Tut. Tut. Totally, Here's totally the tut. issue with totally Tut. We don't actually know how to play build a pyramid with it. It's yeah. a kid's, kids math. It, it is. It's a, it's a kid's kids math. It's got a great look to it. It looks fun. It's super cartoony yeah. and stuff. And ultimately, uh, I, I like these kinds of games that, uh, you know, teach kids something. Thank you so much for being here. If you like what we do, check us out over on YouTube's. YouTube's at the Brothers Murph. Indeed. Last week we had a top, uh, new top 10 come out, so check that out. And we're not trying to do a hostile takeover of the Dive Tower. Just gonna throw that out there. But here's the thing, if we can get their 200,000 subscribers, might go for it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>。this week well lots of reviews I'll be taking a look at the new expansion for seventh continent uh, very excited about that um, well I don't want to spoil it because I'm not gonna say that it's awesome yet um, but uh, that's coming up several other reviews we're gonna be doing over the course of week you're gonna see a lot of footage as I said uh, from the UK Games Expo and from come on Expo so you'll see some videos for those go up we're gonna be doing our top 10 language independent games so talking about that I believe we got a uh, playthrough coming up here at the end of the week so there's a lot of cool things I mean it's kind of a normal week for us but like I said there's testing Tuesday tomorrow all that stuff of course uh, Dice Tower podcast itself is going up each Tuesday and lots of other podcasts which you can find on dicetowernetwork.com lots of stuff join us this week Hi, we're Board Game Opinions. My name's Jonathan. I'm Steve. I'm Amy. I'm Mark. And this is our speed quiz where contestants, these guys, are attempting to guess as many games as they can within a certain category. And today's category is deduction games. So I searched on Board Game Geek for anything that technically has been listed as a deduction game. And uh, you're going to get two points if it's a game I haven't played, or one point if it's a game I have played, as always. And we're going to start with Mark. Off you go. Chronicles of Crime. Yes. Avalon. Yes. Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. Yes. Go of Dracula. Uh, let me just find it. Where's it gone? Oh, it's there. Resistance. And so, uh, uh, <laughs> you can faster me yet, Amy. Uh, gosh, I've forgotten now. Um, well, werewolf. Yes, one night ultimate werewolf. Five stories. Uh, no, secret Hitler. No. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, that is there. Ooh. Um, I've totally been thrown off. If I had one. Uh, Mark. Yeah. No. Oh. Cool. Yes. Okay, I'm going to open it up to the floor. Masquerade. No. Spectre Ops. Yes. Uh, Tragedy Looper. No. Mm. Sleuth. Uh, no. Shadow Hunters. No. Uh, two Rooms and a Boom. No. Um, Mafia de Cuba. Just a few seconds, no. Uh, De Detective Undercover. The true crime stories. No, and that is the time. So give me a second to add up the scores. I'm see how they did. All right, the scores are in. So Steve got four games, Amy got two, and Mark got three. Uh, in fact, I played all the ones they mentioned, so there are no two pointers there. Uh, with any that you thought of that they didn't get, uh, that's our list. The other things you could have had would have been code names, Battlestar Galactica, Dead of Winter, Cryptid, which Amy got just after we <laughs> stopped the time limit, uh, Mysterium, Love Letter, Lord of the Rings, The Confrontation. So yeah, lots and lots of possibilities there. All right, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hello, and welcome back to Retro Board Game Corner. I have a picture for you. Maybe you can guess what game I'm going to be showing. Yes, Jack, my heart will go on. Here I have The Sinking of the Titanic, published in 1976 by Ideal. This is a two to four player game in which you're rescuing passengers off of the Titanic, getting them into lifeboats, and waiting for the rescue ship. Let me set this up and show you how it works. 
This is what the game board will look like set up. First, everybody's going to pick color, and then everybody's going to draw a passenger card. The passenger cards have numbers on the back, and that's what you need to go for to rescue that passenger. You're going to roll two six-sided dice and move along the ship. Every time you reach a blue space, you're going to get a water token. Every time you uh, get to a green space, you'll get a food token. When you reach the correct number room that you have, you'll just flip it over to signify that you have rescued that passenger. You will then draw a new card and look at the number, and then that is the next room you have to go to rescue that passenger. Every time you roll a one or a six on the dice, you have to sink the ship. And you sink it by moving it to the next notch. So again, every time you roll a one or a six, you move the ship one notch. As you can see, the ship is starting to sink. Eventually, the ship is going to go ahead and sink all the way. And as the ship is sinking, it's going to put the lifeboats into the water. So once that happens, you can go ahead and get into the lifeboat and then start moving along the sea path. When you're moving in the ocean and every time you roll a one, you'll take a sea adventure card and do whatever it says. When you come to an island, you will take an island adventure card and do whatever it says. As the boat continues to sink, a rescue boat will pop up on the other end. The first person to get to the rescue boat with at least two passengers and two food and two water will win the game. There's more rules to this game, but I just gave you a quick overview of what's going on. When this game was released, survivors of the Titanic supposedly sued the manufacturer, which forced them to take it off of the shelves and rename the game Abandoned Ship. Everything was the same, the artwork, the tilting ship, but the words Titanic were completely taken out of the game. Well, that's all the time I have for now. If you have a comment, comment below, or you can tweet them to me at RetroBoardGamer. And as always, may your rolls be high. Alright folks, let's see what we're adding to the library this week. I'm putting in Grimoire because Grimoire is a great little game in which you all cast spells at the same time. I'm putting in a couple great two-player games, Dos de Mayo, fantastic one, and The Duke, Lord's Legacy. Adding in the party game One Key, I know a lot of people are going to like this, Valparaiso, this uh, Euro style game, and the classic Twilight Struggle. I'm also putting in my copy of Codex, this fantastic two-player game. We're putting in more two-player games in the library because I, even though I encourage multiplayer games at conventions, we need to get some two-player games in there. And speaking of which, Battle for Five Armies, really big, big game. And Millennium Blades, that's a two to four player game. So a lot of people like that. And Rapid Response, the new pandemic rapid response. There you go. It's Jen, the board game librarian, flipping some pages and pushing some cubes with my segment from the page to the table. This week, we're going to travel to a magical world of The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. Under the black and white tent, we have dueling magicians, we have a feast for the eyes, and we're sensing all different things. In this book, we have two characters who are growing up learning magic and learning for an epic duel. They've never met each other, however, and this romance starts budding between them. Uh, it takes place uh, in, in the past, and it has this wonderful element where it kind of travels back and forth between the future. That's part of the magic of the book as well. They're honing their craft. They are looking for this epic showdown at the end. And Aaron Morgan Stern does a really wonderful job at capturing that. So, of course, why would I not pair it with Dracarian? Designed by Richard Amon and Victor Peter. Published by Mind Clash Games. Two to four players. So, it's almost like they were channeling the Night Circus here in this game. You are playing as dueling magicians. You are honing your craft uh, by worker placement. You're going and collecting all the resources and learning new tricks that you need to do. And at the end of every round, you are having um, your performance. 
you are collecting mag mag assistance, and it it's just a wonderful application of the theme that's in this book. This doesn't take place in a circus, but I think if you liked your carrying, you would really love The Night Circus. And if you've read The Night Circus, which is going to be made into a movie, you will also really love Tracarian. That's all for this week. Happy breakfast, everyone. In the last two segments, I talk about Orlan's and Orlan's invasion. This week, I'm talking about Aldi Planner, also designed by Randall Stockhausen, and comparing it with Orlan's. Coming up. Hi, it's Stella from Apple University. Hope your week's been well. Aldi Planner, as with Orlan's and Orlan's Invasion, is a competitive pool building game. Love them all, with Orlan's Invasion is one of my favorite cooperative games I've played. The main difference in Aldi Planner compared to Orlan's is that in Aldi Planner, you actually used all the chips you have in the bag first before putting it back to the bag. Game comes with player box where you put all your used up chips there. The other difference is that the chips you drew and didn't use in the previous round, you if you live in your planning phase area, they count towards your drawing limit in the next round. I think I like this mechanics better, means that you use all the chips you have and the circulation is more even and more control, less random. The game is also encourage you to more thinning out your deck by moving your chips to your own private warehouse, not a common area. This also gives you more strategy as there are rules of placement in the warehouse to maximize the points you get. The other big difference is the location part in Altiplano. It is very interesting where you need to have enough movement to be able to do your action in certain location. I love it. It adds another layer of strategy and complexity. overview how to play and play through of Aldi Plano by the way on the channel so if you're interested check them out at Mipple University on YouTube. Thanks for watching and see you next week. Alright it's a quick one this week. Um, I'm currently standing here in the heart of Paris, France and just came from London, England and get to travel all over the world. And there are what we call sub-gaming cultures. There's, you know, the war gamers, the Euro gamers, the Ameritrash gamers, the card gamers. But you know, when it comes to culture, I've always been thrilled by the fact that board gamers are friendly and inviting all over the world. Sure, they have their quirks, so do I. Lots of people have their quirks, but one of the things I like about gaming is that I can go anywhere in the world and meet people and we have something in common, something in, you know, they always say the opposites attract in uh, like dating and stuff. I never really, I guess that happens, but me and my wife, we hang out with each other because we like some things in common, right? But when you meet someone who games, you have something in common. That's why the Dice Tower Cruise is great because when you sit with dinner with people, you have something in common to talk with them about. When I meet people in England, when I meet people and, and you know, I'm, we're, we're about, um, I, I have been at the UK Games Expo by the time you've seen this, but I'm not there yet. But when I go there, I'm going to see all sorts of people from all different backgrounds. And yet we have something in common. And that something in common is a good thing. Board games is inherently a good thing because it brings people together and has a good time. So gaming culture, you know, we talk about cultures and culture shock and all that. Yeah, we can describe that to gaming culture, but I still say it's one of the coolest things around. I love it and I'm glad to be part of it. Hey guys, it's Nick, and we're back with Mental Health Minute, and we're going to talk about that game. Yes, that one. Your favorite one. The one you will always play. The one that nobody could come up to you and say, hey, do you want to play this game? And you say, mm, no, I don't feel like it. That doesn't happen. You're on your way to work, and someone says, wait, do you want to play a quick round of this game? Oh, I do like my job, but oh, let's go. Let's play that game. Why do you have that game? And everybody has that game, that game they love, the game that they can't not play if it's offered to them. Everyone has one. I have a game that I love that stays with me forever. It's never going away. And I will play that game whenever someone offers it to me. Caverna would be mine. 
we as gamers love certain things and certain things about games, whether it's nostalgia, mechanics, art, experiences, memories, what have you. Everyone has things they look for in a game and some games just offer all of it to you. All of it. And what do you do when you have all that in front of you? You try to make other people like the game. So you try to play it as much as possible. What about your favorite game makes it your favorite? What about the, your connection that you have to the game from your brain to the game that makes you just need to play it sometimes? Just always wanting to. Also, what is that game that you guys picked? Caverna is mine, but what about you? Let me know in the comments below. And please, go play that game today. Have fun with it. Enjoy your breakfast. Today's episode is... <laughs> We're gonna be looking at... Uno! Drop it. This game destroyed my life. Charlie, Charlie, gaming's what he do. It's time for his favorite segment, Charlie's Quick Review. Yeah. Everyone gets seven cards. That's the draw pile. This is where you play your cards. I can play a red card, or I can play a number three of a different color to change the color. Or I can play a wild. Or I can destroy someone's will to live. <laughs> this is how you destroy relationships. If someone throws this card at you, that means they hate you and they want you to die. This card ruins relationships. game mechanic while well, while you're discarding cards matching cards going forward and if the player is down to one card any other player can say uno 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 and that person they can never play uno again it's in the rules i'm sorry dad i know you only had the one time please come back uno super fun you haven't played uno uno is spanish for terrible card game with all the colors, numbers, and coordination you have to do, Uno is a great game for kids to learn how to hate their family members. Wow, Uno, that game's the best. This game definitely didn't cause a rift in my family that made it so that now we can never play board games together ever again. The greatest one Spanish word card game I've ever played. Thanks, Mattel. Now the expert can recommend hiding all your cards behind one so that when you're playing, people say, I'm gonna get them. Uno, Uno. Uno. And you say, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> no, that wasn't a new no. There's more than one behind here. More. <laughs> Draw four. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching Board Game Breakfast. Tune in each week for your daily dose of gaming goodness with Tom Vassell and all the gang. Until next time, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching Board Game Breakfast, a Dice Tower production, sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., an amazing place to buy board games. Cool stuff in stock at Cool Stuff, Inc. Go for it.